everybody. Creative Katie, Karen Birdshill here. Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Take the time to subscribe to my channel and select the option to get notified as soon as I upload a new one. You won't miss any that way. Here we have a series, 12 Days of Christmas. 12 mixed media art journal tutorials, all in a Christmas theme. I hope you enjoy this series. Links to supplies can be found in the description box below, as always. So I'm starting with a five by seven canvas board, and this one is purchased from Artist Loft, but you can get them at the dollar store or yeah, Amazon, and I'll put links to the ones on, that I found on Amazon, both this size and other sizes. So what I'm going to do is create kind of a Christmas tree background, like the branches part. And I'm just gonna put on some yellow. This is Naples yellow. And I just realized that I tend to, you know, paint a lot with my fingers. I just find that it gets the job done. And, you know, you don't get overly blendy. Although in this case, what I'm trying to do is put a coat of uh, the yellow underneath. And then I'm going to put the hooker's green on top. And I'll be stamping into the wet acrylic, hoping that some of the yellow will peek through wherever I stamp. But you can also just put the paint, um, put the yellow and the green at the same time and stamp on and on as you go. So that's right there is my hooker's green. I love that green. It's, it's kind of dark. It's not in your face. And I'm going to pretty much cover most of the yellow here. Or that's the plan because my stamping. But again, there's lots of ways to create the a similar background, and then each one's going to have slight variation. And in fact, in this video, I end up making four of these five by seven canvases. Um, I'm getting ready to do a craft fair. So here I have this foliage cube. I believe it's from Stampendous. And I'm just stamping into the wet acrylic, and you can see how the yellow is peeking through. And this is just giving the look of the um, pine tree. Now, as you're going, if the paint gets tacky, it will lift up. So you kind of have to play it by ear. So I added a little bit of the light green on here. There wasn't quite enough and, and I just needed some more variation. So using multiple shades of even the same color works. Now, what you're looking at here is me doing my usual using up leftover paint. And I'm just wetting some coffee filters and then painting the paint on there. And now I'm going to do some stenciling on top. Now, since the coffee filter is wet, you'll get a different effect than if you did the stenciling once it was dry. But these coffee filters, you've seen me use them in lots of videos, lots of creations, lots of collage work. I absolutely love them. So I just have a stash ready to go. And I'll put a link to the video, um, my build, build Your Stash video, where I talk more about using coffee filters. So now that the backgrounds are all dry, I decide I want to add a little bit more depth. And what you see there, yes, that's blue. I'm going to stamp with Prussian blue on top. So I stamped into the wet acrylic and now I'm stamping with acrylic paint. This gives some very lovely texture and I love how the Prussian blue works so well on the green. It, it doesn't read blue when it's on there, so when you've stamped into acrylic, you need to clean your stamp. So I spray my Murphy soap on there and use a toothbrush to get into the grooves and clean it up. So here are all my various backgrounds. And as you can see, they're not all identical and they're somewhat, you know, different shades and hues and 
that's all lovely. So what I have here, the, what you see, the circles, are circles that I cut out with my circle press punch and out of my gel prints and colored papers. And I'm, I want these to look like Christmas balls. And then the crazy bird, the Tim Holtz crazy bird that you see, is also going to be a Christmas ball hanging from the tree. So it's kind of a close-up of it. Now, each of these balls, even though they look like they're different colors, if you're up close, you can see they all have some purple in them. So I'm just using some gel medium to glue these all down into the placements. And I'm gluing this down because I'm not sure at this point in time how what color I want to do the crazy bird. And since I don't know what color, I am going to stamp a sentiment on here. Now, I did a rough, a quick try of this, and I have Merry and Bright. And I love that stamp set. And I'll put a link to a similar one. I wasn't able to find the exact one on Amazon, but I'll put a link to a script stamp. I love it how because it connects and it looks like script. And it's a nice, decent size. So I made a rough, I stamped onto just paper, and that's just helping me figure out the orientation and where I need to be stamping. And since I'm going to be making a few of these, I'm just, um, you know, it's well worth my time to kind of make that little bit of a template. And this time, because I'm going, I know I'm going to go over it with my uh, fine liner bottle, I'm just stamping with the archival ink. I like it a little bit darker, a little bit blacker. So that's why I'm going over with the fine liner. But, you know, you pick and choose. You've also seen me stamp and stamp into wet ac acrylic paint and then stamp but typically I end up going over with the fine liner anyway so I just thought this is easier to do and I don't have to clean off the acrylic paint off the the script stamp and on this one I've arranged that the B on here is actually going to be stamped on top of the Christmas ball and that's going to just add some dimension to the overall product. I find this script stamp a lot easier to place than just regular block letter stamps because you do want them connected. So I'll save that for the next one. Still not sure what color I want to color that crazy bird. So I'm just going over this with the fine liner. Because I think also, you know, while this is drying, because this, because it's going to be fairly wet, needs some dry time. That way I can just set it aside and when I'm coloring the crazy bird. And you can see how much darker it gets. There I had to look at the original one to find out where, where the bee is because of how it got kind of placed in the branches. Now these 5x7 canvases, I could put a magnet on this and it could be a nice size fridge magnet for the Christmas time. It can pop into a 5x7 frame, but I would take out the glass. It, it'll also stand on a mini easel or it can just sit on a ledge. So it's a perfect little gift. So 
So I decided that I'm just going to paint with the acrylic paints. And this is just an aqua craft paint. I think Americana. Grab a smaller brush for the finer areas. And I'm just going with one color, but I will add some shading and detailing soon. Liking the contrast with the rest of the balls and the background. And here I've just grabbed a darker, I'm not sure if that's phthalo green, I think it is. And I'm just using, just shading a little bit to add some of that interest in. I could have gone in with my pit brush markers and shaded it with them as well. Both, you know, the acrylics and the big brush markers are permanent. So they would be my first choice. I love these crazy birds. They're just so versatile. I've used them for so many different kind of things. So I'm moving to a, another can, five by seven canvas. And this one, I have one of the crazy cats, which is going to basically be another Christmas ornament that's hanging there from the limbs of the trees. And I'm following the same process. All the balls there have some element, some color that's similar. But I also like the variation. Some of them have metallic, some are, have white space. And as much time as I spend fussing about where the placement is, you really can't go wrong. So here I've stamped Meowie Christmas on on that on the other one and I've have all four of these done. When you're doing multiples of any given thing, it's easy to kind of do them in assembly line fashion. I did all of the stamping, I did all of the coloring once I knew what I was doing. So here I am painting the top of the Christmas balls onto the ornaments and on top of the cat and the bird. <coughs> Excuse me. Now gold I find quite often you need to give it a couple coats and let it dry in between. So I, I do the first coat here and I go back and I add another coat. So I'm going to do some shading now with Payne's Gray. And hopefully you can see, you know, instantly how that little bit of shading makes those ornaments stand out, just makes everything pop. If you don't have Payne's Gray, you know, you can use black, but I really like Payne's Gray, especially when I'm using blues and greens. It's not quite as harsh as the black. So here I'm shading on the inside of, on top of the paper, the, the gel prints. Sometimes I shade on the outside and that just gives a slightly different effect. Sometimes I do both. So I want some shadow behind this bird in front of this ball. And the shading that you do like that is going to make it look like it's 3D. So you see what's in front of each other. Just 
just adding a little bit more shading on here. And with shading, you add one layer and then let it dry and do another layer. So now I'm going to continue doing the shading on all four of these 5x7s. Here I believe I'm shading on the outside. I'm not on the, on doing it on the gel print, I'm doing it on, on the outside. And you get a slightly different effect. I think initially I wasn't sure if I was going to draw a string to dangle these ornaments. There's no um, string that they're hanging off of. I was going to just kind of put the cattail and hang him like an ornament there from his tail. Maybe that'll be another one. I'll just have several cats hanging from the tree by their tails. If you're not sure where to put shading, look at pictures and see how where the sh where it's the darkest. I just kind of go by what looks good. I'm just drawing some lines in with my micron pen, but make sure that everything is perfectly dry and cool or you'll be buying a new micron. Using the micron pen just to add, make the lines, some of the lines a little darker. Especially when the paint, paints are a little more opaque, they tend to doll out those lines. I've got some gold paint in my fine liner bottle and I'm just adding the little bit of top and that, that little detail just seems to make it Now, in case the people that buy this don't want, don't put it in a frame or um, I'm just edging it with, I'm not sure if that's, I think that's Payne's gray, but it could also have been Prussian blue. And that's just going to frame the picture and finish it off. And you can see there the variation of the Christmas balls that I have in all the pictures. And, you know, all the color combinations work. 
I'll decide I just have to do some splattering. So I've got some gold paint there and I'm thinning it down. Got my fan brush and I'm just going to splatter the gold on top of this. Just add a little bit more shimmer. And I know I'm going to be putting a gloss varnish on this. So the metallics are going to really pop. Thanks for watching. Join me for the next day of Christmas. Here are the four canvases.